not how hard you hit. It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done, reads the plaque. Donated to the city by Sylvester Stallone himself 24 years ago, back in 2000. And speaking of getting hit and getting back up, this is a race that hits you for seven plus laps and you have to get up and keep fighting. Yeah, I don't know what Rocky was talking about. I'm not trying to get hit that hard. But these barriers will hit hard. And we're hoping to see these guys not have to find out. Just how hard. Yeah. And I, I do know a runner, actually, it is a video that's out there somewhere on, on the web that uh, actually broke both of his arms when he hit a barrier and fell over. Really? Not the, not the way you want to uh, be remembered for your steeplechase performance. No, not at all. All right, we are underway. Men's 3,000, first of two heats for our Cleveland men's steeplechase presented by Coca-Cola. So a total of 15 on the oval. And it doesn't look like we... Uh, have anybody out there that's uh, not in at the finish, of course, is uh, Alexander Korzynski from Northeastern. He's a man that's got close to four flat speed in the mile, so he is out on the steeplechase venue this evening. Alexander definitely have seen him run a number of times on the uh, magic carpet at Boston University during the flow track live streams of the meets at BU. Not leading the way right now. And Nathan Mountain leads the NCAA this year with the 82068 in this event. So that is a mark all these guys are chasing. Abdel Kane Abdijar from Eastern Kentucky is number two. His teammate, he has a teammate in this race. So we'll see if he can be inspired to kind of catch up to his teammates second rank time in the NCAA. And uh, did I see Korzynski just hurdle the uh, the water pit? It looked like he did. Uh, I swear if he did touch the hurdle, it was fairly briefly. But uh, Alexander Korzynski is on a rocket pace so far. Yeah, Phil, that's what they do now. I've noticed a lot, especially in the World Championships over the summer. Uh, definitely the Africans were saying, why put the foot on? Let's just go over it. And kind of works with him. He was flying over water, I tell you that much. Alexander Korzynski, the leader, and he does have some company. As sitting in the number two position, Patrick Sigerson from Providence was looking back to see the spacing back to uh, two of the three Eastern Kentucky runners. Yeah, Krasinski has us out to a very solid pace that you saw was really strung out. Starting to pack up behind the leaders, so it may be settling a bit, but still at a pretty good solid pace. Three Eastern Kentucky guys there near the front. And by not stepping on the Bears, he definitely comes out of there a lot quicker with a lot more gas. No uh, stopping in that forward movement. And Alexander Korzynski still leading the way. We see Brett Gardner from NC State popping out in the lane two. He's moving up toward the front. He's in number five position currently. So just over three minutes into this first heat of two of the men's 3,000 meter steeplechase. And we're starting to bunch up just a bit, so the pace is getting a little more comfortable for many of these runners, but still a solid pace. Krasinski is still pushing it up there in the front. So still leading the way, Alexander Korzynski from Northeastern. We'll see him again tack the water jump without touching the barrier up and over. Everybody else is putting the foot on it. And straight out in the water, he's just going for a long journey flying over that water pit. And it looks like it's Brett Gardner at NC State. So Brett Gardner now has moved up into the number three spot behind Tigerson from 
Providence. One more mile to go in this one. Korzynski still leading. Thigerson Korzynski, Thigerson, and Gardner. Yeah, Tigerson looks pretty comfortable there in that second spot. Doesn't look like he's exerting a lot of energy. Definitely no wasted movement. Just straight forward and back. So in the uh, EKU kit, we have Kristen Imroth and uh, Pedro Garcia Palencia. Again, EKU, Eastern Kentucky. They're in fourth and fifth. Thigerson now in the lead. Has taken over from Korsinski, who led from the gun. And that strong early pace is starting to wear on Alexander Korsinski. Yeah, he did. Got back up, but still, that might be his race there. It, with that small, minute mistake that cost him big time. He still has a teammate there in the third position. That's Brett Garner. So he's going to carry this Eastern Kentucky. And that was Pedro Garcia Palencia. I'm sorry, Will. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, yeah, that's a that's a costly fall. And the pace set by our earlier leader, Alexander Korzynski, has pushed him all the way back to the tail end of our second group. So he is currently in ninth as Patrick Thigerson from Providence in the lead. With Brett Gardner from NC State moving up, he is now the front runner. Made the pass right in front of us on the back straight. Imroth wants to give chase, and Jarvison just moved in there. And the pace has definitely picked up, Phil. They're getting at it. Garner is moving this forward. Tigers is still in con contact. But he's falling off the bit. Just as I say that, Tigers is really pressing right now. And you mentioned Nate Mountain from Virginia. He's the East leader in the steeplechase this year in Division One, 820.68. Yeah, that national leader mark is faster than the NCAA winning time last year. So that is moving, and that is what Patrick Tigerson is doing. Sorry, Brett Garner is doing for this race. He is out 10 meters, maybe 15 ahead of Tigerson at the moment. So Gardner currently sits in the number nine spot and with an 842.46. Tigerson is sixth at 838.69. That is in the East region. You have to be in the top 48 to qualify for the regional event at the end of May. But it is Brett Gardner coming up on seven minutes of race time. Makes that big left hand turn toward the water jump. And it was nothing but maybe one move that put Garner in position and he continued to press the gas. And he's got over 400 meters to go. He could be looking at a good time here himself. Eastern Kentucky now is in second. But there is a lot of open track between Brett Gardner and the rest of the field. It is the Bell Lab. Bell Lab now, though. So again, Gardner looking to improve on that 842.46 that he ran earlier this year. And in fact, that looks like it all the way back at the Raleigh Relays on his home track in North Carolina. Garner has attacked each of the last four hurdles. Little stutter on that. Christian Imroth from Eastern Kentucky, the closest challenger to Brett Gardner. Final water jump. One more water jump. For the member of the Wolfpack, up and over clean. Imroth has started to close. It's under 10 meters left. Yeah, he has, and he's got to just get to this next hurdle and come off faster than Gardner, and he will be. Look at him, look at this. He put the pressure on Gardner right there. And Gardner, I think, heard the PA announcer, but the turnover belongs to Imroth. And he celebrates the victory at 835.32 for Christian Imroth. Boy, that turns him to number, he's number 10 now in the NCAA. Gardner made a move, and it, I thought it was brilliant. It was if this wasn't a full 3,000 meter race. So Gardner improves his time, but it's in the number two position is Christian Imroth. 
from Eastern Kentucky with the win, 835-32. But the turnover, the pace, shorter strides, but he was cooking after that water jump. Yeah, he was. And look, he trains with the second-ranked guy in NCAA. So maybe he learned a few things. And he executed well down the stretch in that race. All right, our final steeplechase heat of the evening. They're getting ready to warm up, coming up on the track. And there's the pass. Kristen Emroth saved it for the end. And he's going to celebrate the victory for Eastern Kentucky. As the top five in that race, very close. With an 835 winner. And back to fifth, 837.8. So the top five, all under 830.